every job you do is going to have a lot of factors at play between design time, CNC programming time, setup time, and machining time. Should you be charging the same rate for all of them, or should you be staggering out those different costs when you quote a job? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And on today's episode of Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving back into the Practical Machinist forums to help tackle this question posed by a member. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised today, we are going to be heading back into the Practical Machinist forums for the first time in a little bit to help out a forum member who came on with this question on their hands. To very quickly summarize the post, a forum member came on and they said, you know, I'm trying to price out jobs. I feel sometimes I'm competitive. I feel sometimes I'm not. And I'd like to know what everybody thought about how you charge out jobs when you quote them. So when it comes to a job, as I said at the top of this episode, you probably got four or five factors in terms of the times you're gonna put into it. You've got your CAD programming time, sorry, your CAD drawing time. So that may be designing the part or designing your fixturing, you know, it's the drawing part of the job. You've got your CAM programming time, which is where, you know, you're going to program your machines and get them ready to go. You have your setup time where you actually go put the vices in, put the tooling in, build the fixturing if you have to build it, um, you know, all the things that get into actually getting the machine ready to go. And then you have your actual machining time, which when you're doing it, you know, there's some jobs where you program for this long and you machine for this long. There's other jobs where you program and set up for this long and you machine this much when you're talking about the entire job. So the first one is to know, do shop owners out there charge the exact same rate for CAD drawing, CAM programming, the fixturing and setup time, or do they have different rates in terms of how much they charge for each of those things? This sounds like a very simple question on its surface, but it's not. There are a lot of factors at play, you know, depending not only on what kind of job it is, but what kind of shop you are, how big are you, what kind of equipment are you running? So let's kind of start off the top with some of the opinions I saw on the forum. The first set of opinions that I saw, which I understand, um, and I think is good was that the four members and I see this as well. We're saying that, you know, depending on your shop, my time is my time. So whether I am doing any of these things, I am charging the same rate because my time is my time. The price is the price. I don't necessarily think this is wrong advice or bad advice, but I do think that it's advice and an opinion that's tailored to a very specific set of shops. And those are small shops, you know, one man shows, two man shows, um, the small shops where the one person is doing everything. And in that kind of environment, this makes sense. If you're a one man shop or two man shop, you know, it's you and an employee, or it's just you on your own, anything you do is going to be your time. So if I am programming a machine, well, I can't be running a machine. So therefore I need to charge the same rate. Or let's say I have an entire day that I'm programming something and I can't run anything. Well, I could be making more money running parts if I charge lower for cam programming. So I might be leaving money on the table there. It's in those circumstances, I definitely understand it because what happens if you do have a job where you have to do die design and then you're going to build the die. Well, if the die design takes you a week, and you bill out at a lower rate for your design rates, well, then all of a sudden, you know, your expenses don't change. You know, you still got to pay for your mortgage. You still got to put food on your table. You're just making less money. And that's not a greed thing. You may not be able to cover your expenses. So that definitely makes sense in that case. We at our shop here, although we're, how many do we got now? Eight people. We still do this with certain jobs. Um, it really depends. And we'll kind of dig into this a little bit more as we go, but it's not even necessarily bad advice for bigger shops, but as you get into bigger shops, we're still a small shop. This advice can actually start to hurt you a little bit. Um, as the forum pointed out, on the other hand here, 
there are a lot of factors at play. Um, once you get to a bigger shop with more people, five, six, eight, 10, 50, 100, this can be damaging. The first thing to, rem to remember when you're looking at what to charge for what kind of shop rate is what goes into your shop rate. There's some inescapable costs that you're gonna have no matter what you're doing. You know, you gotta pay for the electricity for the building, gotta pay your mortgage, gotta pay your tax, gotta pay your employees. You know, if they don't really charge different rates, whether they, unless they're a contractor, you're paying them the same, whether they're making parts, sweeping the floor, designing anything, right? These are some costs that you can't really escape. And as you guys know, anybody who's bought a machine or has run a machine or has managed a shop knows that just buying a machine and putting it on the floor, that's not where the money ends for that machine ever. You've got your consumables, you've got coolant, you've got end mills, you've got fixturing, you've got all these things that go into it. So there's certain things that you have to make sure are built into your shop rate. While the labor for a same person doing the sweeping the floor or designing a part or machining a part, their labor may stay the same, but now let's say that person's running that machine. Well, I've never seen anybody break an end mill or run out of coolant if they're programming. So now we have those costs that you can't escape, but where are they being used? These are all the factors that you really need to drill down on when you're looking at what to charge for what rate. Because if I'm charging my machining rate, for my programming, I could be massively over quoting jobs because there are a lot more factors that go into running the machine than programming, uh, programming a computer. So you really need to kind of keep that straight. The second thing you need to keep in mind is that how big is the job and how many parts are you doing? If it's a one-off prototype or a short run of parts, like we kind of do here at Lakewood, I'll typically just build my programming costs right into the actual job and I'm gonna charge it all the same because it's a, it's, a, it's a single part or it's 10 parts. There's no real benefit to kind of breaking that out and showing people what's going on. However, if we have a very large run of parts, let's say a thousand parts, 2000 parts, sometimes it makes sense when you're really trying to get your part price down so you can be competitive to break out your programming costs or your setup costs. So on a job like that, we may say, listen, I'm gonna charge X for first off programming, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm gonna charge X per part. This helps because if you're going up against other companies quoting the same work, if you build that price into your piece price, you may appear uncompetitive when really you're not. So sometimes it helps to get those bigger orders. Also then, I mean, in reality, it's gonna take a lot of money to set up for a big job. You know, I might need to get someone to program for 10 hours to really get every second out of a program, really make sure that's optimized. You know, we may wanna build fixturing that takes a day to build or two days to build. So we can run, instead of running, you know, two parts and vices, so we can run a whole table full of parts. I don't necessarily wanna have that built into my machining cost because my machining cost, then once it's set up, I've got that program optimized. I have a fixture that works really well. I may be able to set it up, press a button, walk away, come back at the end of the day and unload it, right? It's there, my machining cost is actually much cheaper than my programming cost. So all of this to say, guys, is that when it comes to looking at how much you should be charging for different things, you really need to think about it more than I probably think most people do. I'm guilty of it, you know, there's a time and a place for slapping a price on a job and sometimes that's gonna work but as you know, things keep getting more and more competitive out there, we're all going after the same pieces of pie, we're competing globally, you really need to think hard about how you're quoting out these jobs and how you're billing that time. So I advise anybody who's doing quoting or running a shop to think about this a little harder. In any case, guys, I'd like to know in the comments below, how do you guys think about this? Do you charge the same rate for everything? Do you separate it out? Do you show the customer that? You know, when I quote stuff, generally I don't break things out too much because it just complicates things. But do some of you guys do that and is it successful? Let us know in the comments below so we can all keep learning from each other. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.